Hello. Launching soon is Axiom 4.0. This is the biggest and best version of Axiom yet. Before I show you what is new, why it's so exciting, I want to say a big thank you to all Axiom's team members. They've worked so hard solving complex problems, trying to make browser automation simple for all of us. And also I want to say a big thank you to all our customers, for all our customers who've helped us solve bugs, who've helped us create new ideas, who have helped us beta test this new version. I'm Alex Barlow, co-founder of Axiom. Let's dive in. Why did we make Axiom 4.0? Well, in the eagerness to get Axiom into the hands of users, we took a few wrong turns and we made some bad design choices. Well, in Axiom 4.0, we fixed all those mistakes. We're now free to enter a really fast product development cycle. We're super excited about this and we're already making new features ready to ship in the new year. What about all my old Axioms? Well, the good news is we've been testing Axiom rigorously and all your old Axioms will work with the new engine. We've deliberately made it to be backward compatible and although we are retiring the interact step, it will still work within the Axiom 4.0 engine and beyond. Ready? Let us take you through all the new cool stuff. Next up are brand new looping and nesting features. Let's open up Axiom. I'm going to add my first step. I'm going to type in loop through. I'm going to click return and I've added my first loop step. Now within that loop, you'll see I've got an add sub step. Here I can add any step from Axiom, no longer constrained like the interact step was in the previous versions of Axiom. And importantly, I can add another loop step within that loop, creating a nested Axiom. Now you can go up to four levels, so that gives you enough flexibility to create some pretty complex automations. That's pretty nesting. cool. The new features for nesting and looping I've just shown you means it becomes just that bit simpler to build your axioms. Here are a couple of useful design patterns. The first design pattern is for a web scraper that loops through links from the Google Sheet. We're going to open up the axiom. You'll see, first of all, we have at the top, step one, a read data from the Google Sheet step. Then step two, we've got our brand new loop through data step. Within that, we've got our nested steps. Step 2.1 is a go to page. Then we have a get data from bot's current page step, which is where we have the web scraper where you just point and click and select your data you want to extract. Now, that's if you're, you've used Axiom before, you'll find that you're familiar with that. That pattern hasn't really changed. But what's different here? is in the previous versions of Axiom, you'd need to put your write step and your delete step outside of the loop. This meant you only ever wrote data at the end of all the loops, and if the bot stopped mid-run, you wouldn't get the data. But with the new version of Axiom, you can put your write step within the loop, whereas previously you couldn't put it inside the interact step. So now you can write your data with every loop, no data is ever lost, and you can remove one row at a time when a loop is complete, meaning if your bot ever stops and then you just click run, it will pick up from where it left off. So follow the simple design pattern when building web scrapers. The next design pattern is looping through a Google Sheet and entering data into a web form. You can open up the design pattern, or the axiom rather, and you'll see it here. Again, we're using our first step is the read data from Google Sheet. Then we have our brand new loop through data step, the step two. And then inside there, we nest any of the steps we need to enter the data. 2.1, go to page, that loads the page that we want to enter the data to. Then we add other steps or sub steps to enter the text into different form elements and a click element to submit the form. Finally, we add a delete rows from Google Sheet step so every time a complete set of data is entered, it will delete a row from the Google Sheet. So when it loops, it can process a fresh row. New steps. 
Well, because we freed ourselves up from the constraints of the previous versions of Axiom, it means in Axiom 4.0, we can go ahead and develop some very new and exciting steps. We can add better steps for dealing with logic. Here are the first of those steps. The first new step is the if condition step. Here I open up Axiom. You can see I've got the if condition step already in there. This allows you to check against data. So it can be data from that you scrape from a page to check if a button is present. It can be data from a Google Sheet if you want to check a value. Then you can set a condition against. That can come from a data source, or you can just set a, a value manually. You can, of course, reverse the condition if it's true or if it's false. And then within the if condition, you can add its own sub-steps. So the if condition will only execute those steps if the condition is true or false. Catch. Next, the try catch step. This is a step that the, all the developers who use our product have been asking for. It's one we've only just been able to implement because of the changes we made for Axiom 4.0. Let me show you this step. So it's called try catch. Now, what you do is add a series of steps that may or may not cause an error. And then if they do cause an error, you can catch that error and you'll get a message back from that. There will also be a token available with the error in that if you want to, for example, send a message to yourself with that error. Finally, you can then add a series of substeps below the catch that will only be triggered if an error is caught. Next up, we've also improved the UI for moving, deleting, and managing your steps in Axiom. Let me show you. So I'm going to open up Axiom. Now, I've got all these enter text steps, and I want to actually put them in a loop. Well, we've added this brand new loop feature to when you select steps. If I just click on the steps I wish to put in the loop, I can now click loop. Instead of going through the step finder, well, it does take you through the step finder. Instead of having to launch step finder, I can just move those steps straight into a loop. And if I have too many steps, I can just select the ones I wish to delete and press to delete. Finally, if I want to disable a step for testing, I can just click tick, press disable. I can also do that for more than one step at a time. Again, I can enable steps. And if I just want to click deselect, I can just do so there. That makes for a much better step um, experience when building with steps. Also worth noting when you click in between axioms, when you have one selected, you can copy your selection. So if I wanted to move a step below and copy it, I could move it there. Or if I just want to move a step and not copy it, I can just click where I want to move it to and press move. That's pretty cool. Now, because we have introduced looping and nesting, it does become important that you can jump to steps within your loop or within your nest. So if I add a jump step here, for example, what's new in Axiom is that you can now jump to a sub-step. So if I wanted to jump down to 2.4, I could enter 2.4. Previously in Axiom, you could only jump to steps and not sub-steps. What's new under the hood at Axiom? Well, I've just shown you the nesting, the looping, the new step finder. We couldn't implement any of those features without rebuilding Axiom's engine. So our team completely took the old engine to pieces. They ripped out all the spaghetti code, fixed the mistakes we made in the past, and got the new engine ready to release several months ago. It is in fact now powering all Axioms currently live. That's how we know Axiom is backwardly compatible, and that's why we're really confident in launching Axiom 4.0 at the beginning of January. What's next for Axiom? Well, because our roadblocks are gone, because we've got Axiom 4.0 ready to ship with its new engine at the, at the start of January next year, we are ready, and I'm gonna be very non-technical here, we are ready to motor. That's right, we're gonna be shipping even faster. And so our focus for the next quarter is going to be on onboarding new users. We're going to introduce new features like an AI quick bot builder. It's already been designed and has gone into development. 
We're also going to do a video guided walkthrough for templates. That feature's already been designed and gone into development. We're also introducing a, a, a recorder for your steps. So you can just point and click and Axiom will record and add the steps that you want. That has already been designed and will be going into development shortly. We'll also be adding more logic steps and a fully featured debugger, which is going to be pretty cool and help you solve any issues with your Axiom. But we also want to hear from you. So do reach out via our support form or reach out by any of our social media channels, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, or LinkedIn, if you've got any ideas or if there's a feature you want to see built. When are we launching? Well, I can confirm, and I have mentioned it in the video, it will be the start of January. We have been testing, we have written automated testing, our users have been helping us test the tool or the updated version of the tool. So we are ready to ship. There will be no more delays. We're ready to go in January. And we look forward to hearing what you think about Axiom 4.0. That's a wrap. I hope you've enjoyed discovering what's new about Axiom 4.0. Please do check out our blog if you want to find some guides. We've already been adding guides that are made on Axiom 4.0 for you to follow. And do like and subscribe.